Welcome to the 2024 Roy Morgan Farmers Webinar on Agricultural Technology or Ag Tech. At Roy Morgan, we have an extensive panel of more than 30,000 Australian farmers who were surveyed about their on-farm experiences, the challenges they face in their behaviour, as well as their attitudes and future intentions. Over the span of a year, we survey dairy farmers, cropping farmers, livestock farmers, and horticultural farmers. We survey farmers on big and small properties, including farmers who are part of a small and large business. So let's start with how confident farmers are and how they're feeling in these stressful economic times. Seven in 10 farmers feel that they're financially worse off than they were a year ago when they're talking about their farming business. That's no surprise given high input costs and variable prices. In other words, only 30% are feeling better off than last year. Farmers are more optimistic about the future though, with 60% expecting their farm business to be financially better off next year than this year. That still leaves 40% of farmers expecting things to be worse next year though. However, farmers are pessimistic about macroeconomic conditions in the next 12 months, or even over the next five years, with 69% saying they don't expect the economy to get any better. Crucially, this is negatively impacting their investment confidence. 58% say in the next 12 months, it'll be a bad time to invest in growing their business. So what's behind these attitudes? When we ask farmers about their biggest challenges, responses inevitably went straight to input costs and price instability. For example, one farmer said that price instability was making it impossible to plan ahead, while others said they couldn't expand because prices were down and costs were up and labour was too hard to find and land was too expensive. Not a pretty picture for the farming community. It's unsurprising, therefore, that most farmers, 57%, say economic conditions are their biggest challenge. That's well ahead of the 23% who nominate government policies as their biggest challenge. Staffing issues are next at 18%, followed by weather at 16%, and business viability, also 16%. Somewhat surprisingly, only 7% of Australian farmers nominate climate change as their biggest challenge. But are these challenges changing over time? Looking back over the past three years, we see a growing challenge about economic conditions. In 2022, only 35% of farmers said economic conditions. But by 2023, this had increased to 49%. And now in 2024, as we said before, a majority, 57%, blame economic conditions as a major challenge. Government policies has also grown as a challenge from 6% in 2022, doubling to 12% in 2023, and almost doubling again to 23% in 2024. Staffing challenges are up, as are challenges about overall business viability. Only weather and climate change are becoming less of a challenge for farmers. Now let's turn from what's worrying Australian farmers to their uptake of on-farm technology, or ag tech. Now, almost all Australian farmers, 89%, have used or would consider using ag tech. 78% of farmers have ever used ag tech, and currently just under three quarters, or 72%, are actually using agricultural technology. Given 78% have ever used it, that's an attrition rate of only 6%. So only 6% tried it, but gave up on it. Surprisingly, the data reveals that only 11% of Australian farmers have not used ag tech and really aren't interested in it. So which technology is the most popular? The answer is farm management software. And that covers pretty much everything from paddock mapping to animal genetics, feed inventory, water monitoring, and even biosecurity planning. Next comes the EID tag category. Electronic tags enable individual animal identification via a microchip. 
usually in the animal's ear, that can be read using a scanning device. Satellite technology at number three provides farmers with detailed information on, for example, real-time data on crop performance and soil variability. Precision farming uses satellite technology to guide precision ploughing, seeding and fertilising for optimal productivity. Drones do everything from monitoring crop and horticultural health and readiness to pick or harvest to monitoring remote stock water troughs and even mustering. Finally, remote sensors gather a myriad farm data from soil wetness to pasture problems and can be simply controlled from a smartphone. Given the technology revolution happening right now on farms across the nation, two important questions emerge. First, what are the real benefits? And then just as importantly, what's stopping farmers from embracing technology? Well, according to farmers themselves, the top benefits of agricultural technology include less wastage, the ability to diagnose issues remotely, reduce labor, and new opportunities. More accurate record keeping, the ability to monitor huge areas, better livestock management, profitability, reduced input costs and reduced wastage. So with all of that in this golden age of farm technology, why isn't every farmer on board? Well, the number one reason by far is cost with two thirds of farmers nominating cost as a barrier to entry into the ag tech era. Poor connectivity is also an issue and simply not knowing enough about ag tech comes next, followed by what's seen as a lack of need, low benefit and too much regulation. But remember that 89% of Australian farmers currently use or have, have at some time used farm technology. So the barriers, while important, are standing in the way of only a small cohort of farmers. So which ag tech brands are the most prominent in the minds of farmers? Who do they think of when they think of ag tech? Without any prompts, we asked farmers which brands came to mind when they thought of agricultural technology. The top brand is John Deere. John Deere farm machinery is what many farmers dream about. It's what we call an aspirational brand, not just in Australia, but around the world. Second is Gallagher, a brand known to just about everyone who's ever installed or been zapped by an electric fence. These days, Gallagher is making a name for itself with animal performance technology and wireless water monitoring, all using their apps and software. Australian icon Elders came in third, Elders has been embedded in the fabric of Australian agriculture for more than 185 years. We wanted to know what farmers thought the government should do to encourage the uptake of even more ag tech. So we asked them. They told us that the government should provide incentives to reduce the cost barrier of entry and also provide more training. One Tasmanian sheep farmer suggested the government fund educational field days to familiarise farmers with the technology and its benefits. A consistent response was a call for the government to fund better phone and internet reception. Remember con connectivity was such a big issue. A beef farmer in New South Wales spoke for many, saying if we can't even make a phone call, how can we adopt new farm technology? And while we're on the role governments could play, we asked farmers if they thought governments understood farming and the results were surprising. Eight in 10 of Australia's farmers said that the Australian government does not understand farming. Only 9% agreed the federal government understood their sector. Across the board, very few farmers think governments know anything about farming. The state with the highest percentage of farmers agreeing that their government understands farming is South Australia, but even there, only 19% agree. Next comes New South Wales with 11%. Oddly, given that it's virtually one big farm punctuated by mining, the state with the lowest percentage of farmers believing the government understands their business is Western Australia with only 4%. Farmers are much more positive about government departments and agencies 
and particularly their own peak associations like the National Farmers Federation, with 70% of farmers agreeing it understands farming. That said, it seems entirely counterintuitive that 30% of farmers believe their own farmers association doesn't understand farming. Somewhat predictably, the government departments responsible for climate change and the environment gets the lowest score, with only 14% of farmers believing that this department understands farming. Now let's turn our attention to the very important topic of trust and distrust. Roy Morgan recently announced nine Agribusiness Award winners based on our 2023 research on trust and distrust among farmers. The winners were Zoetis, Bendigo Bank, Incitec Pivot, Norco, Graincorp, the MLA and Ridley, with elders coming out on top as the best of the best. Finally, data collected during 2023 reveals that most farmers trust an agribusiness brand because of good service or a good experience. Interestingly, of the top five reasons farmers give for trusting an agribusiness brand, none includes price. We'll be vigilant to see if that continues in economically stressed 2024. And that's a wrap. Thank you for joining me on this important topic to farmers and to all Australians who rely on them for food and fibre.